Hey buddy, watch this. Hello, Hello Regis Kelvin is the name, and Hearthstone is the game, and this is my look at the 10 best 6 mana cards in Hearthstone. Now when I say best cards, I don't necessarily mean they just win in a fight on an empty board. I mean cards that are the most valuable and impactful and influential in their various decks, and have had the biggest influence on the metagame right now and throughout the history of Hearthstone as well. So starting off with number 10 is a warrior card by the name of Shield Maiden. This Goblins vs. Gnomes card is a solid body for 6 mana at a 5-5 stat allocation, but really it's the battle cry that makes Shield Maiden so good. It's great in slow control, control warrior style decks that are looking to live forever. It also combos really nicely with the card Shield Slam building up instant armor and allowing you to use that shield slam as removal on relatively big minions with ease. That's what makes Shield Maiden so good and really a staple for almost any control warrior list these days. Moving on to the ninth best six mana card. It belongs to Gadget Zan Auctioneer. This guy is really just all about setting up miracle style decks made most popular with miracle style rogue back in the day but he still tends to pop in from time to time, giving a class or a deck with lots of spells some kind of new life or a new angle or a new take. And since he's a neutral card, he does get a little bonus points because he is available to multiple classes and has been used successfully in like Mage and Druid and, and of course most particularly Rogue. But really this guy is just a card engine and a value engine and even though his stats aren't that great for the cost, he makes up for it in pure value and potential. Moving on to the 8th best 6 mana card, it's Savannah High Main. This one's really just a legendary card and a rare card's body. It's just packed with value and stats, and it's the ultimate mid to late game card for uh, Hunters. Not only is it a 6-5 by default, which is incredibly good, but it's also got a really strong death rattle. Summoning two separate 2-2 Hyenas giving you another 4-4 which in essence makes this something like a 10-9 in total stats for 6 mana. And it's even better because those stats are split across multiple bodies, making it much harder to deal with Savannah High Main. It's also a beast for all those synergies. This card is just so packed full of goodness. It's really a shame that Hunter isn't designed to better leverage a card like this because otherwise it could just be totally dominant and even though it might be the best card on an empty board that would win in a fight of all these on the list uh, since it's in hunter and isn't used all that regularly it does fall down the list a little ways moving on to the seventh best six mana card in hearthstone removing to priest for entomb this removal spell really gave control priest everything it needed to be ultimately viable it's the best straight hard removal spell in the game because not only does it Kill the enemy minion, it also silences it, in effect, removing things like death rattles. And then it also gives the minion to you, so you're removing resources from your opponent, you're generating resources for yourself, which is great in slow pre-style decks that want to last forever and draw through their deck and build up resources, limit fatigue damage. That's why Entomb is so good. It also gave priests an answer to the... Um, four attack minions that they always had trouble with in the past. So things like Yasera are no longer a threat in the world where Entomb is one of the go-to priest cards, and that's why it's on this list. Moving on to the sixth best six mana card. It is Just a Car True Heart. Six mana, six three with Battle Cry. Replace your starting hero power with a better one. Now this card is really only used in a few different classes, mostly Warrior, Priest, and Paladin, although it can show up in other classes from time to time, but it's been such a big part of those classes across a variety of different decks, traditionally control style decks that look for late game value, which is exactly what Justicar Trueheart offers. She just finds her way into a lot of different decks that want the games to last a long time because for six mana, she can start generating almost infinite value over the course of a longer game. And that's what makes her so good, especially in Control Warriors where she gives you four armor per turn. And that's how those warriors get 30, 40, 100 armor built up throughout the course of a game and become virtually unkillable on the back of the Justicar True Heart Battle Cry. Moving on to the fifth best six mana card. It's the Paladin's Mysterious Challenger. This one really doesn't need much description. It's the card that launched 
an entirely new deck archetype for Paladin, and that same deck has really just dominated the ranked ladder ever since. Uh, this one, of course, puts a secret, not just one secret, but all of your secrets into play at once. It has a great body as a 6-6, six, 4-6 six, six mana. It's just loads of value. The biggest swing card in the game. It's hard to deal with, even on its own. Everything about Mysterious Challenger is fantastic, and it has no downsides. I can't believe this card it still hasn't been nerfed. Secret Paladin still rocks the ranked ladder daily. It's still a nightmare to deal with. Uh, it's a very good card. The only reason it's not higher up on this list is because it is a class card, so uh, it doesn't impact every class necessarily. It's just only playable in Paladin. So I like to give neutral cards a little bit of a benefit of the doubt just because they can be played in so many different decks, and that's why this one's only at the number 5 spot instead of higher. But it's actually not the highest 6-mana class card on the list. That belongs to Force of Nature, as much of a Scourge as Mysterious Challenger has been on the Ranked Ladder, I think Force of Nature has really been an even bigger burden on the Ranked Ladder. Of course, this is the first part of the Druid Force of Nature Savage War combo that does 14 damage from an empty board and has made mid-range Druid the go-to top-tier deck virtually forever throughout the history of Hearthstone. I think there's a pretty strong argument that this card could be the best 6-mana card in the game, just because it has influenced the metagame so significantly for so long but as i just mentioned i do like to give neutral cards uh, the top few spots just because they belong to all nine classes and this really only belongs to one class i don't think force of nature needs much more description it's very good it's very powerful and it's very common to see but let's go ahead and move on to the top three six mana cards all of them are neutral the first of which is still new from league of explorers this is Reno Jackson, the 6-mana 4-6, has a solid body attached to his cost, but it's really the battle cry that defines Reno. If your deck contains no more than one of any card, fully heal your hero. No one needs an introduction to Reno. He has spawned hundreds of new decks. Virtually every class has some style of Reno deck that only includes one of each card in the list and uses Reno as a late-game uh, escape option, essentially, Restoring your health to full, giving you a second lease on life, and hopefully allowing you to stabilize the board and win the game over the long term. This is an incredible card that has changed the metagame, has really helped close out aggressive decks to some extent, and slowed the game down a little bit, which is always nice. Reno was a much prayed for solution to a problem, and he's still being played quite regularly and quite successfully in decks like Reno Lock in particular. That's why Reno Jackson takes the top spot on the list, or the third spot on the list, but he doesn't take the top spot on the list. Even though some of you might think he's the most impactful and powerful, he can only be played in very specific kinds of decks that are built around him. And to me, that's a limitation on his usefulness. The top two cards are cards which can fit into almost any deck at any time and still work. The second of which, the number two spot, belongs to Emperor Thorison. The six mana five five has an insane effect. At the end of your turn, reduce the cost of cards in your hand by one. There are hardly any cards that offer more tempo than Emperor Thorison can offer. All of those cost reductions allow you to make big plays on future turns and do things that would otherwise seem impossible. He enables combos. He gives you lots of value. He's got a good body. He's an instantly removable threat from your opponents. They have to deal with it every time. So in function, he has taunt in some regards. Uh, this card is just so indisputably good and works in almost any deck except perhaps the fastest decks out there. Emperor Thorson belongs in spot number two, but I still don't think he's the best. I have one more card that tops my list. Might be debatable for some people. But to me, it's still Sylvanas Windrunner. I think she's still the best 6-drop in the game. She's just great in any given situation. Again, a 6-mana 5-5, five, five, those stats are great. They can deal with so many different things, like Sludge Belchers. They don't die to piloted Shredders. It's just hard to deal with trades well. But really, it's Sylvanas' death rattle that makes her so powerful. She takes control of a random enemy minion anytime she dies, which creates so much friction on the board. It becomes a nightmare 
for your opponents to deal with. Of course, she's a little bit susceptible to silences, but even then, that means they're spending resources in removal to deal with her, and you might be able to save up better answers later, or better threats later, that need those silences, making Sylvanas kind of a lead into your bigger threats later in the game. She just creates problems for opponents. Sometimes she gets crazy value, particularly if you can kill her yourself, like a priest or a warrior who's using a Shadow or Death or a Shield Slam to make a really cheap, efficient play using her as a removal spell of sorts. But even if you play her on an empty board, usually she's going to cause pauses for your opponent where they have to think about how to handle this situation and what to do next, lest Sylvanas completely ruins their hopes and their dreams. Now, I do think Sylvanas has lost a little bit of love as more and more six drops have come out, like Emperor Thorison has played over her in a lot of instances. There are more and more six drops in classes that are better, but Sylvanas still sees play. You never really feel bad putting her into any given deck list, and throughout the history of Hearthstone from day one until now, she's just been such a prominent fixture in the metagame that I think she still deserves the top spot, even though she's trending downwards just a little. I also think that she has so much potential in the future. Since she is part of the classic set with the arrival of the standard format, Sylvanas is going to be sticking around. Thorazon eventually will drop out. Reno eventually will drop out. Sylvanas is going to be a mainstay in the meta for a very long time to come, and that to me is why she's the best six mana card in Hearthstone. Now, I'm sure you have some disagreements. I'm sure your list looks a little bit different than mine. Share your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what your top six mana cards are, what the order is, what I got wrong, what I missed, how crazy I am. Let me know. Don't be shy. I'd love to hear it. So thanks so much for watching, and until next time, game on.